In this video, we're going to look at how to set up a JDBC environment and specifically how to create a JDBC data source and what the JDBC data providers are. So basically JDBC sort of in general for IIB for our ICFM installation. And all of the commands that you see on the left side of the screen, I will post below this video. For details about the commands that we're using here, I would suggest looking at this web page here, which discusses JDPC provider configurable service for IIB. Now, before we get into the details, let's just review very briefly uh, JDPC providers and data sources. So we know that if we have our IIB toolkit here, and that toolkit is going to connect into our database. Well, first of all, we know that it has to connect into our integration node and integration node. And of course we know that inside that integration node, we have our integration server. And then what does the server do? Well, it serves out applications. And, you know, inside that, of course, are, 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 are our message flows. So those are the message flows. But the thing is that somewhere in your environment, you're going to have your database. And the question is, how do you get the integration node to connect over to your database? And the answer is through something that you're already familiar with, which is JDBC. But the question is, well, okay, well, what does that mean exactly? How does that work? And the answer is that you're going to use two things. One is called the JDBC JDBC provider. And the second thing, which is what it, this is going to actually connect over to and use, is called a data source. And really, it's the JDBC data source. Now, to draw this a little bit uh, better, essentially what's happening here is this. So we have the integration node kind of connecting. Let's, uh, let's draw this a little bit better here. Sort of doing this. So this is kind of the connectivity here. So your, and just to really drive home the point, let's do it like this. So it's the integration node that's going to connect into your J, D, uh, JDBC provider, and it's going to use something called JNDI, or Java Namespace, uh, Java Naming Directory Infrastructure. It goes to your JDBC provider, and then from here, it's going to connect over to your data source, and then it's your data source that will connect over to your database. And in our case, of course, this is DB2, and the name of it is CFDB. But the question that, get, that comes up here is what exactly is inside that JDBC provider? And the answer is that essentially it is a series of files. And those files are what really, <coughs> excuse me, which really provide the connectivity to the specific um, database. So are you using DB2? Are you using uh, Oracle? What are you using? And a, a good example of this is one of the files might be called DB2, and we're going to look at this, jcc4.jar. And another one might be, you know, DB2 CC license cu.jar. And we're going to look at that. So that this will be a series of files that are already installed inside was. Because remember, all of this essentially here is running was, right? The integration notice is running on was. So it's using was to connect, uh, uses JDBC to connect into DB2. So the JDBC provider is going to connect to a JDBC data source. And we sort of shortcut that whole process mentally and just call this whole thing JDBC, but they're actually separate. 
So what we need to do is this. We need to connect or create the JDBC data source because these files are already installed on the server and we are at the point of doing this right here. And you can see this written down here if you go to the WAS administration red book, which is this one here. Uh, the Web Server Application Server 8.5 Administration Configuration Guide for the Full Profile. It's a free download from Red Books. And you can see that a JDBC provider definition describes a vendor provided, so that's why we're talking about DB2 earlier, or Oracle, a vendor provided JDBC driver, including the type of database access that it provides and location of the files that provide the implementation. Now that's different from that data source definition, which provides, which uh, JDBC it, it defines which JDBC provider, so that's the thing we already talked about, to use. It, but it also includes the name and the location of the database and some other connection properties. So the way to see this in WAS is to, I'm going to load the analytics server. So you're familiar with that. So you have your core server, the analytics server, and the data server, of course. So the way to find this is you go into the analytics server, which is what we're looking at here. You go down to resources and sure enough, you're going to see JDBC providers and JDBC data sources. So if you look at the JDBC providers, sure enough, here you go. You get the DB2 providers, you get a decision server. XA is for transactional uh, information where the XA stands for transact. That's the idea of XA. And if I click on this one, for example, you'll see there are the DB2 jar files we were talking about. So db2jcc4.jar, for example, where JCC stands for Java Combined Client. That's JCC. And these are actually type 4 uh, dr drivers in the case of the J actually db2jcc and db2jcc4. Uh, here is a list of what, it, and this is covered in a previous video, but you have these type 1 through type 4 dri drivers where type 4 is the most common. And that's separate from the API, which uh, is currently at version 4.2. And of course, again, that's covered in a previous video, but type 4 basically goes directly to the, uh, the, the database uh, provider directly. And so there we go. We have our JDBC providers. And then the data sources are different. So the, the so data sources are telling us the JNDI name and where this thing is located. So for example, if we go into counterfraud DB, we will see, take a look at this, we have the scope. So we have you know where this applies. So we get the cell in the cluster. We have the provider. So that's the XA uh, we were just talking about the counterfraud db this is the jndi name and if you want more detail about any of these things you can just sort of hover the mouse over these fields to get more information and then we have the db2 universal data store helper that's uh, what we're using to get in to the database and then we have our security settings uh, where you can do mapping and some other things but this is the key part here the, the common and required data source properties we know it's drive uh, driver type 4, we know the name of the database, we know the server name, and we know the port number. So that is the data source, and remember that the data source is using the JDBC provider like we had shown to get into the database. And then as a kind of a side, a JNDI works a lot like LDAP. It's a kind of root and tree system. So you have the root at the top and then you get the tree kind of, uh, you know, these branches going down. And it's just a way to identify things in an abstract way. And they're very similar to, it's very similar to LDAP. With the only real difference being that JNDI is a Java thing, whereas LDAP is a kind of more generic uh, directory lookup sort of, um, well, it's a, it's a directory system, right? JNDI is, is meant to get this namespace using Java. If you if you'd like more detail about how this works exactly, go to page 381 where you'll see this great diagram of how these pieces all fit together. It uses something called JCA. There's a connection manager where it runs a connection pool, so you always have a connection into your database. You could Your program can either get to into the database using JDBC directly, or it could have this uh, connection pool. And there's another diagram which is also excellent, called the, which is the Relational Resource Adapter, RRA, adapter model showing you more detail about what's inside uh, the components we saw on the previous page. So this is a great way if you're, if you're interested in how this works, how the persistence uh, architecture works of WAS essentially.